Hey, Jim Bergman on behalf of AccuTools. We're getting a lot of questions. Uh, a little People don't quite understand flow in a vacuum, and some of the manufacturers don't even understand flow in a vacuum. So I thought I'd take a couple minutes and just cover a little bit about uh, what makes flow different in a vacuum and why you really need to use an engineered solution uh, like True Blue uh, for your hoses. So I got set up here. I got a, a field piece VP85 pump. And on the outlet of the pump here, I've got a Dwyer flow meter, and I got another camera set up so you guys can see the flow meter uh, handy on there. And basically what I want to show you is uh, a couple different things with flow. We have three types of flow in the vacuum. We have viscous, we have transitional, and we have molecular flow. In our, in our segment of industry, we want to be in the viscous or the f fast flow region as long as we can. And then we go into transitional flow, which is transitioning to molecular flow. Both viscous flow and molecular flow can be mathematically expressed. Transitional flow really can't. There's no mathematical formula for, for transitional flow. It's just where we can see viscous flow end and molecular flow start. And so we want to be in that viscous flow region as much as possible, which is our, our high flow region. So when you're thinking about pulling down a vacuum, you know, initially we have to degas. And degassing means we're going to pull out, like if we were talking about this tank here and it's full of atmospheric pressure, we're pulling against all that atmosphere and it's going to come down very very quickly and then the the flow is going to drop off so right now if i open up this half inch port in this vacuum pump and i start this system up this is an 8 cfm pump so if we turn this guy on we'll see that our flow gauge here goes all the way up to about eight cfm we just double check that here so we're right at about eight and a half cfm of flow on this vacuum pump so that's full flow but as soon as i put my finger over the port and the the, the atmosphere is blocked off now you can see the flow drops down to about nothing on there, right? Back to full flow again, back to no flow again. And that's, again, now we're at, we're, we do have flow still, but now we're in that transitional or molecular flow region in here, um, which is a lot different than the initial degassing that we're doing with a big hose. So when you're doing this and you're thinking about, okay, well, what size hose do I want to connect? Well, you saw that this half inch port pulls a, a full eight CFM. If I go with a three eighths port, this is porting size. You can see that it's also about a little bit under 8 CFM. And if I open this up fully, it goes up just a tiny bit, but not too much more, even with two ports open. If I open a third or a fourth, there's going to be no change on there. So let me screw these back on. And let's see what happens when we open up the quarter inch port. Now, the quarter inch port's not one we typically ever evacuate through. This is one we're going to use for hooking our micron gauge to. You can see that that drops down to about about five and a half, six CFM of flow right here on there. So this quarter inch port will still move a lot, but what happens when we hook a quarter inch hose up to it? So right here, I've got a, a quarter inch hose, a ball valve with a standard depressor in there. And we're just gonna just test the hose by itself. So when I connect the hose, you can see that all of a sudden you can hear the difference in the pump sound too that our flow dropped down below one CFM of flow. If I hook a Schrader core port up to this, on a quarter inch, you'll see if you watch that flow gauge, you'll see it, it probably doesn't even want to change here because the flow is so low and you can barely hear any flow at the end of the hose now. Because the Schrader port is a restriction, the depressor is a restriction, the ball valve is a restriction, and a quarter inch hose. So I've effectively taken my eight CFM pump, I've turned it into less than one CFM. Right, and I don't care whose quarter inch hoses you use, this hose is, is not only a major restriction to viscous flow, but even more so to flow in a, in a deep vacuum. So let's go ahead and we'll cap this back off for a minute so we know that that's not an issue, or that is a big issue. And let's go ahead and we'll connect a competitor's hose here for just a minute. I just hit my mic off, let me reconnect it. All right. So this is a, a 3 8 by quarter hose. Oops. And again, the, the ports don't make too much of a difference here. I showed you that at the beginning of the video. You can see when we connect this hose up, it's pulling down to about 7 CFM, right? So not, not bad, a tiny bit of loss on there. You got six foot of hose here, um, but it pulls down to about 7 CFM. So the quarter inch porting on the end on here is, is big enough that it's not causing a lot of restriction and the, the, the flow at the 3 8 port is fine also. 
So let's look at a true blue hose and we'll compare that. So now the true blue, again, not a lot of difference here. I just happen to have a half inch end on this one, so I didn't swap it out. But you can see that when we connect the true blue hose, there's absolutely no difference in the flow at all. And it doesn't matter what end I connect to it. If I take this end off here, and uh, we take off the quarter inch end and we put on the, the 90, it's still gonna have about the same amount of flow here. Now you might wonder, well, why in the heck do you have all that flow through the uh, through this port, but not that port? If you look at the diameter of this port, you'll see that it's physically much larger than this port is here, right? So that larger diameter, that wide open diameter is gonna really make a big difference in flow. And again, this, this quarter inch port in the vacuum pump is not one that we normally evacuate through. So you can see that you know both these hoses, they do pretty well when it comes to initial degassing, which would be you know pulling that system down is, is uh, getting the initial atmosphere out of the system. But there's a big, big difference in these two hoses and that is how they perform. We're talking about transitional and molecular flow. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna swap these guys back. Let's put this quarter inch end back on here. And we're gonna test these two hoses sort of side by side. And the, again, the pump will pull down to about 15 microns. So the goal of whatever we're doing here is to take all the work that's being done at the pump right here, and we wanna move it to the far end of the hose, right? So hose length, you know, these are six foot hoses. Uh, they're a little bit longer than I think most guys wanna work with. Um, but, you know, if you're doing commercial work and things, uh, some people still want a six foot hose, but most people find that you can, you can, the hoses are really excessively long. But when we're talking about performance here, it's good and snug now, let's take a look at what actually happens. So, we'll tighten this guy up here. Take this off a of sleet, and let's pull this down here. So we'll turn this on, make sure everything's good and tight here. You can see right away we're down to about 500 microns, so it's come down pretty quickly. And but you can see the pull down rate here. We're about 200 microns, 140 microns. Uh, uh, this minus, or sorry, that's 400 microns a minute. See, we're at 200 microns. You can see that as this is coming down, this is just evacuating just a hose here. This is starting to slow down here. And the hose is starting to slow down because a couple different reasons. Number one is it's a half inch hose and it doesn't have as high a conduction speed as you're gonna see on the True Blue. But also this is not an engineered hose. This is a repurposed hose. It's, it's a, it is a charging hose, a double wall or triple wall charging hose on here. It's not engineered for vacuum. You can see we're, we're, we're stalling about 200 microns. If I let this go for about 15, 20 minutes, I might get down to about 100 microns, um, maybe a little bit less, but this is very, very typical for this type of hose. So you can see I'm about 205 microns here. I'll just stop here for a second. I'm just gonna disconnect this hose and connect up a, a true blue and we'll see the difference here. Now notice each time that I cap this off again, that flow drops down because we're the viscous flow is over and we're into more of the um, transitional molecular flow range. So we'll just hook this up to the gauge here. And come in here, Jim, so you can see where you're at. As soon as we get this on the gauge here, you can see now we're down below, already down below 200 microns, approaching 100 microns, and coming down very, very quickly. And this is, again, this is why this is so important. You have a hose that's engineered for vacuum and not repurposed, because this hose is gonna get, take all the work, work the pump's doing, and it's gonna move it to the end of the hose and it's gonna give us faster, deeper vacuums and much, much better dehydration. This is why True Blue outperforms everything else in the market. We're down to 75 microns here. It'll be down to 50 microns in just a few seconds. And it just takes uh, minutes for this to actually happen. 
So let's take a look at, at the big reason why. When you're looking at these two hoses side by side, right? This is a, a, a triple wall hose here. You got a, you know the interior wall, a reinforcement, then you got this interior wall. This is a half inch diameter. Well, this is a full three quarter inch diameter on the inside of a true blue hose. So it makes a big, big difference when you're talking about conductance speed because what we're talking about when we're talking about conductance speed is the friction, right? So the smaller the hose is, the higher the friction is on the hose, especially at trans transitional molecular flow. It's, it's higher friction all the way through, but when we get into molecular and transitional flow, that's when it really, really makes a big difference. You can see now this vacuum gauge down, we're down to about 50 microns, and almost all the work that the pump is doing is now at the end of the hose. If we let this run a few more minutes, it'll get down in a 25 micron range. Let's say about, probably about, uh, about 10, 10 microns of loss overall in the hose where a competitive hose, you're gonna see over 100 microns of loss easily. And that's what makes, again, an engineered solution a better solution all the way around. And a lot of guys don't understand that. Yeah, both hoses are gonna really get you degassed quickly, but True Blue is gonna get you dehydrated and in a deep vacuum, a deep finishing vacuum where you wanna be a lot faster. So anyway, I thought you guys might like to see this. I found it very interesting. It allowed you to get an idea of what you actually see flow in a vacuum. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you would, like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you'll see the new feeds come in. This is Jim Bergman on behalf of AccuTools. Thanks a lot for watching.